Igor, more power, and activate the control panels. Activate your own control panel, Scott. And stop calling me Igor. For this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate techniques I use to create panels for a friend's short film. For Matt's project, I bought a lot of knobs and switches at a used electronics yard. For the purposes of this video, I'll be using dollar store alternatives. It's also important to note that for the tutorial I was working very fast and sloppy. I strongly encourage the use of one of these for your own panels. Now let's get started. All of my panels begin as a sheet of poster board. My first technique is layering the board. Control panels are not flat. Some areas are indented, others pop out at you. I used an X-Acto blade to cut a rectangle out of one piece and glue a second piece below it to create an indented effect. This board is based on an antique switchboard, which, if you find an old picture, you'll see have an alternating stripe pattern. To replicate this, I used adhesive foam tape. For added decoration, I bought notebook paper reinforcements, colored them black, and stuck them on the tape. Next, I took some pen caps, cut off the clip, and spray painted them gold. After punching some holes in the black stripes, I inserted the pen caps. It gave the board an extra 3D effect and allowed Matt to run cords out of them. On Matt's board, I had real switches, which I cut holes for in the poster board, slightly smaller than the switches themselves. As a low-budget alternative, I like these adhesive wall hooks. Adding a piece of poster board on top of the main board gives it another layer, opposite to the indent effect from earlier. This also serves to break up the board into sections. This next segment is all about the gauges. First, you'll need to find a suitable cover. For Matt's board, I had a number of mason jar lids around. If I hadn't, I would have used the rims of dollar store flashlights. I would suggest super gluing the clear plastic cover down inside the rim to keep it from moving. Next, I found pictures of gauges on the web, sized them in a photo editor, and glued them to a cardboard circle. The cardboard circle should be just small enough to wedge into the flashlight rim without pressing against the clear plastic piece. Once you've completed the gauge, it's time to glue it down. After I finished placing the gauges, Matt went through and added connecting lines and labels. Filling in the blank areas with these details helps sell the effect. As alternatives to knobs and buttons, I use plastic bottle tops and spray paint them black. I particularly like Gatorade bottles because of the twist cap. Another common feature of control panels are ventilators. For mine, I applied a similar technique to the gauges where I wrapped a cardboard circle in weed cloth and placed insider air freshener, then glued the whole thing to the board. One of my favorite aspects of the boards I built was the fuel gauge system. I took a clear plastic tube and cut a rectangular hole for it in the poster board. I wrapped the ends in electrical tape and slid a bit of cellophane into one side. For Matt's project, my cellophane was unwrinkled, so I was able to slip it into the tube as a smooth sheet. I placed the gauge so that half of the tube was on each side of the board and lined the edge with electrical tape to give it a border. To keep the fuel gauge from being see-through, I lined the back of it with aluminum tape. Sometimes it's easiest to use ready-made buttons. Calculators are cheap and can quickly cover a board in hundreds of buttons. I used a bit of adhesive tape to mount mine on the board. Finally, remember to keep an eye out when you're searching the dollar store. I wasn't really looking for thermometers, but I liked this so much I decided to incorporate it into my design. It's alive!